Good morning. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It is good to be in front of you this morning, worshiping and uh, with morning devotions, um, connecting. It's a good thing. So let us begin um, with my sharing of the screen. This morning, I'm going to show you a part of central Turkey. It's a um, one of the first places I ever visited. This is the Alara Valley. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Alara basically means pigeon. This is one of the first uh, early locations where uh, the church in times of trouble would go to hide. And in the early church, they hid a lot. Uh, this is the canyon and you'll see it better, but it's there because there's a good source of water at the bottom. And these are all the different little churches and areas uh, that, that um, were excavated, caves to hide in. This is what it looks like. Can you spot the churches? That's an entrance to one right there. It's another one right there. It, they're hard to see. Can you see, there's one right there. It has a little overhang. You can see the entrances. Anyway, um, <clears throat> some of these have interesting names like uh, Agatkalti. Uh, but they're dug out of volcanic rock. They're still painted. I mean, that's what I loved about watching this stuff. Even though it's rough painting, uh, that's a really good red and white paint job. Of course, there's a lot of graffiti on the outside, but on the inside, it's just amazing that these colors have stayed. This is from the 300s, 400s, 500s. And again, they tried to make the buildings look really good, church-like. <laughs> It's hard to take sometimes pictures because they don't want a whole lot of flash. Please pick up your litter. Don't drop litters. Use dustbin. Spelling is... But again, there's a little source of water. It's the whole family enjoying the coolness because it's kind of warm. Again, it's a hidden church. Those are steps we're walking on. And Gabriel Angel uh, is very important, an avenging angel. But again, note how vibrant. I know it's not a clear picture, but note how vibrant that is. This is us gathering in what's a, a, a one of the entrances. That's the visitor center. Let me back up and leave it right there. <clears throat> A picture of the Ilara Valley. From the Ilara Valley, we move on to Stephen Charleston, who is on Facebook. And Stephen writes for us this morning, whether they are credentialed or not, women are spiritual leaders in every faith tradition. They provide vision. They embody the values. They hold the community together. Without the leadership of women, none of our religious institutions would survive. I am from a matriarchal culture where spiritual leader is, leadership is simply acknowledging what is already there. That's his way of talking about the controversy that's going on in the Baptist Southern Baptist Church right now, where just not acknowledging the role of women, they are already in doing the work of angels in the church. They lead without the formal titles. Um, I 
Again, my next reading is from the devotional book. And um, this is from Monica Furlow. Furlong, excuse me, Furlong. And it's a small prayer. It comes from Joys and Sorrows. Dear God, it is so very hard for us not to be anxious. We worry about work and money, about food and health, about weather and crops, about war and politics, about loving and being loved. Show us, show us how to perfect. Show us. Let me read that last sentence. Show us how to show us how perfect love casts out fear. Help us to understand. I guess is the what, what her way of saying. Help us to understand that love casts out fear, and it does. Uh, from there, we move on to Luther Seminary, uh, Daily Devotion, God Pause. And um, this is from Matthew chapter 35, 10 to 8. And that's all I'm going to read. I'm not going to read the 19 to 23. It's in parentheses. So, then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then Jesus said to his disciple, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. <laughs> then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 disciples, first Simon and also Peter and his brother Andrew, James, a son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, uh, Thomas and Matthew, the collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but... Rather, go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out the demons. Receive without payment. You, you received without payment. Give without payment. Our morning devotion writer this morning is Michael Nelson, class of 95. And Michael writes... As Jesus sent his disciples into the towns of Galilee, he gave them some instructions that most of us probably would have find difficult to follow. Travel light. I know how I know I would have had difficulty trying to travel as lightly as Jesus directed his disciples, with not so much as a change of clothing or even a toiletry bag or a credit card. I'm not a hoarder. My wife and I live comfortably in a two-bed rambler without a basement. But truth be told, we also have a cabin and a 24 by 64 metal building, both quite filled with our stuff. Like most Americans, we have more things than we truly need. I am like Max Licata, who confessed in the first page of his book, Traveling Light. I don't know how to travel light. But we all need to learn and strive to live more lightly for the health and survival of the world. Let us go on to the prayer for the from here. So let us pray. Gracious God, we confess that we have more possessions than we need to survive or even thrive. Teach us how to live with less and help us to be more aware of the needs of others. Who do not have enough. Well, I hope you enjoyed these pictures of Alara Valley. It's another good photo of Alara Valley.
just to give you an idea of what what these people were going through. So I hope this prepares you for the weekend. Try to be a neighbor. Hope to see you in church. It's going to be exciting. Two children will be baptized. We have a guest preacher, Ron Burke. Um, come and hear him. I'll be there Sunday. And as always, remember to be a blessing. Amen.